Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this Facebook Live today. Medfin is redefining the future of surgeries in India by offering the latest surgical procedure at lowest prices. At Medfin, you have the latest daycare procedures, which ensures lesser pain, lesser hospital stay, and of course, quicker recovery. We work with top surgeons, state-of-the-art medical facilities to bring the best care for you at affordable prices. Think surgery think medfin and uh, a very warm welcome to doctor we have with us dr sai krishna b naidu who's a trauma and orthopedic surgeon his career spans over 18 years of orthopedic experience with special interest in advanced arthroscopic surgery sports injuries joint replacement and complex trauma he worked at the london olympics hospital in 2012 exposing to vast amount of complex sports injuries during and after london olympics 2012 he has further gained experience at hospital for special surgery in new york usa in lower limb arthroplasty and complex sports injury management doctor a very warm welcome to our session today thank you very much for having me on medicine um, we we'll look forward to Yes, we Sorry. have about 30 minutes, so I'm quickly going to jump into my first question. Could you sure. help us understand the anatomy of knee? Um, uh, whether the anatomy of knee is very simple uh, in terms of looking at it, but if you want to look at the medical aspects of any of the most complex joints in the body, mm -hmm. it comprises of two main bones, that is the thigh bone called femur and the leg bone called uh, tibia. They are interconnected with four important ligaments and certain meniscus and articular cartilage to move that joint smoothly. Okay. And what is arthritis? Why does it hurt? We hear so much about arthritis and people complaining about knee pain. Why does it hurt so much? That's right. Uh, arthritis is a common phenomenon you see most of the elderly patients. It is a part of life. As an evolution, a human body has evolved to stay a certain amount of years mm -hmm. and it has to degenerate. So the very same process within the knee joint, there is something called as articular cartilage, that is the lining of the joint. Mm -hmm. They're like tar roads. Okay? When, you, when the road is new or when you're born, the cartilage is absolutely new. As you keep on using it, it has to wear off. So when the joint wears off, you expose the bare bone to the bare bone, and that is arthritis. Okay, and that is why it hurts so much. Exactly. And I've also read that osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis. So why does it happen? Like, what is osteoarthritis? Um, osteoarthritis is the aging process, as I said, the wear and tear of the joint as you tend to grow older. Mm -hmm. Now, the lining cartilage, what is around the joint is gradually deteriorating. So when there is a deterioration, the bare bone, which is exposed to the thigh bone, to the leg bone, causes a bit of scratching, which in turn causes a bit of bleeding. So the blood brings in the inflammation. Inflammation brings in the swelling, redness, and pain. And that is how, as the cartilage wear increases, and it is significant, pain increases along with that. And that is frank arthritis. Okay. And what are the other types of arthritis? There are plenty of other types of arthritis which you can see in younger people within 20, 30 years of age, even in children, called seronegative arthritis, juvenile arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. psoriatic arthritis. There are also conditions where people have blood deficiencies called hemophilic arthritis. So the various kinds of arthritis. Arthritis, per se, the term involves inflammation of the joints. Okay. Where the joint lining is worn off, mm -hmm. it can happen anywhere. It can happen in the knee, it can happen in the head, it can happen in the elbow, it can happen in the wrist. It can also happen in the small joints of the hands, which you constantly use for moving. Okay. But like you said, the most common form is osteoarthritis. Yes. That is because of the aging population. As the population is aging, we, India is going to the 21st century. The medical health care system is evolving. People are living longer. So you tend to see more osteoarthritis. Okay. And what are the early symptoms of it? How can one identify that as arthritis? 
very good question. Uh, the most common symptom is the patients experience discomfort in the knee. It won't be a pain, pain as such. They start getting pain or discomfort when they start walking up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. When they start getting up, sitting down, as we all traditionally do sitting down on the floor for eating or any uh, puja purposes, they experience that pain. They're not able to fold those legs. These are the very early symptoms of uh, osteoarthritis. Okay. And when should one seek um, treatment? When should one really take help? Or does, do they have to undergo surgery? What is the right time to undergo a surgery? No, not at all. Um, there are various modalities of treatments much more uh, before you come to the surgery. Uh, if you see arthritis in a younger population, and the cartilage is still intact, there are various things that can be done. We can regenerate the cartilage. We can give some life for the cartilage. We can prolong the arthritic process for a few years by doing so. Okay. Surgery is the last resort where the patient has compromised on the quality of life, not able to do his basic activities. Basic activities means might be different. A basic activities for a person who plays golf is different for me or for somebody else. Okay. Uh, some people are very keen on traveling. Post retirement, they want to do that and they have a knee pain and they can't do that. So, basic activities is different for every individual. So, the joint replacement is not a block treatment, it is a custom built treatment. So, you see the patient, you discuss with them, you see their needs, and then you deliver the care. Okay. Okay, that, that actually answers the next question of who should undergo a knee replacement surgery. It's according to what they would like to do is what you said. Exactly, exactly. See, a lot of patients who come to an Indian age group population of about 60 is people who can't do their basic chores at home. Uh, going to the toilet, going down to walk or walking with their grandchildren. These are the patients who have a lot of pain. But as the India is evolving for the modern 21st century, a lot of elderly patients are playing golf, traveling. They want to see their grandchildren travel abroad, uh, spend time with them. They are the patients who are much more increasing these days in terms of having joint replacement and going that extra step to keep their quality of life. Okay. Thank you, doctor. A note to our audience. If you have any questions for the doctor, please leave it in the comment section and doctor is going to answer all the questions later. And uh, my next question is around, uh, again, knee replacement. If somebody wants to avoid surgery, are there any alternative treatments that could help them avoid surgery? Treatment of the knee? Yes, as I said, it depends upon the age group, uh, what we see the patients and what their needs are. If the patient is pretty young, uh, say about uh, 50 years old, and who's still got a lot of working life going on with him or her, and who doesn't want a joint replacement, there are alternatives. What we do is we change the biomechanical alignment. What it means is the knee axis or the uh, lines which run through the knee has been changed by a small procedures, like breaking the bone and resetting them. Or we also do injections into the joints to delay the process of the arthritis and reduce the pain. Okay. So there are various other modalities, we including in a younger patients where the cartilage is damaged, the very particular areas, the cartilage can be regrown. So there are various treatments. It all depends upon what the patient expectation is, uh, what the patient's need is, and where the patient's demands are. Okay. Generally, what is the age group? You said it is due to wear and tear and uh, a flux of time, but yeah. what is the age group that is really affected by arthritis? Uh, good question. Arthritis, as an as evolutionary process, the human body is evolved to live about 50 to 60 years. If you see a uh, life expectancy in 50s and 60s of India or the world, in fact, was about 60 years or 50 years. So this is an evolution process. It is only the medical advancements of recent years where the patients are living longer for 80 and 90. So by default, everyone above 50 and 60 will have arthritis, or some grade of arthritis as we grade the arthritis in one to four. Some people escape this because of the genetic make and they get arthritis somewhere in 70 and 80. So everybody throughout the process of life post 50 are bound to have arthritis. 
And um, yes, so if somebody decides to undergo the knee replacement surgery, what are the diagnosis processes? Is there a test that has to be done to diagnose if surgery? Yes. Yes, the most important part is a clinical examination and speaking to the patient. As I said, the treatment is a custom built, following which we do some basic tests like x-rays mm -hmm. and take the decision for the joint replacement. Okay. And how long does the surgery itself take? As a standard block, surgery takes about one hour. Anything mm -hmm. between one to one and a half hour is per knee. If patient undergoes both the knee replacements, roughly on average about three hours. Okay. And what is the knee replaced with? So what actually happens during the surgery, doctor? Yes. Um, knee replacement is done with a metal prosthesis. Okay. Uh, metal is an alloy of cobalt and uh, molybdenum. So it is an alloy mixture of metals, which is being casted into the rib shape of a knee. Mm -hmm. There is a metal on the top of thigh bone and the metal on the bottom of the tibia bone. In between is the liner, what we call it as a plastic. It is made up of polymers and polyethylene. Okay. okay. So that is what is used inside. And does Use it, it depend on the uh, nature of the body, which alloy is used? Or yes, at least. Yes, you're absolutely right. To some things? Yes. These alloys or these molybdenum and the cobalt is known to be inert to the foreign bodies. Like body does not accept the metals. Okay, and these alloys are inert, it doesn't cause any reaction. If you put stainless steel, if you put other uh, implants or materials, they can mm -hmm. cause corrosion, they can react with the body, they can release chemicals, they can be inflammation. So, these alloys are known to be inert, and that's why they're chosen as uh, this particular section of alloys. Okay, and these artificial knee, how does it stay in place? Because when it is our own uh, kneecap, it stays in place because of all the cartilages and other things. But how does an artificial knee work? Yes, uh, the artificial knee is like a press fit. There are two types of knee replacements. One, which is incorporates into the bone and grows with the bone. Two, we give an, uh, layer between the implant and the bone, because they're calling as a cement. It is also again a polymer which adheres to the bone and the implant and it holds them there. Though it is a press fit, it, it exactly sits into it. This polymer, what we call cement, binds it to hold it much more stronger. Okay. Uh, and I'm still curious of what happens in a surgery. So you cut open the knee, like if you can describe what happens in a surgery for us, doctor. Yes. Um, the surgery involves of a small incision, about 10 to 15 centimeters based on the patient. Uh, following which the worn part of the bone, uh, that is the cartilage worn part of the bone is being taken off and excised. Mm -hmm. As I previously mentioned, the implants are press fit, they're certain shaped, and we cut the bone exactly to fit the part of the implant. Okay. And this implant is then cemented, which was fixed into the thigh bone and the leg bone, the tibia. Okay. Following which we insert in plastic polyliner, which is responsible for smooth gliding and articulation. Mm -hmm. This is a very fine procedure with a soft, lot of things involved with the soft tissue balance. Mm -hmm. The better the soft tissue balance, the better the outcome of the surgeon. Okay. And uh, what kind of anesthesia is used for the surgery? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, anesthesia is purely based on the discussion with the patient and the existing pre-medical conditions of the patient. This is discussed a night before with the anesthetist and usually majority of the time, 70 to 80 percent of the time, it is a spinal anesthesia, which patient is awake with mild sedation. They listen to music on the background and mm -hmm. and then following which the whole limb is numb and anesthetized. For, we do the surgery and it usually finishes about an hour's time and they are out of the surgical data into the recovery in about an hour's time. Okay. In certain cases, patients also undergo a general anesthesia if they are not fit for spinal anesthesia, which will be discussed with the anesthetist. Okay. And post-surgical uh, period, like after the surgery, how long do they have to rest? Do you advise them to get back to normal routine? How is well, absolutely. The whole point of the surgery is the patient comes to me saying that I want to walk, I want to do more, I want to go see my grandchildren, I want to play golf. Uh, this is a very crucial part of it. 
So we mobilize our patients. I mobilize my patients within six hours of surgery. If I do surgery in the morning at eight o'clock, patient is walking in the afternoon or evening. If surgery is happening in the afternoon, patient walks the next day morning. So we make them walk with the frame for first one day. Second or third day, patient independently walks to the toilet. Fourth day, they climb the stairs. The moment they climb up and down the stairs, we discharge them. Wow. Okay. So that, first, go on. Sorry to interrupt. No. Yeah. So this is the recovery time. The current new concepts in the world is they are doing joint replacements as a daycare procedure. That is, you bring the patient in the morning and the patient goes home in the evening. We are yet to catch up with that. Only few centers in the U.S. are offering that treatment. That is by blocking the nerves of the legs. Uh, it is not too long which will be seeing this in India in probably in a few years down the line. Okay. And what could be some of the complications or risks of uh, administering the surgery, doctor? Um, as you know, any of the surgeries are involved with the risks and pretty much with the joint replacement. Mm -hmm. Joint replacement is one of the most successful surgeries in the world. It has got a success rate about 95 to 97% depending upon who does it and how it is being done. The simple complications which involve is infection, clots in the legs, clots migrate into the chest causing pulmonary embolism. We take all the precautions like giving antibiotics, blood thinning medications for all these things. In spite of this, usually uh, it happens one in hundred, but they have a bit of more pain and they usually tend to recover. Okay. And how much pain would one have after the surgery? Uh, it, that is going to be an extremely difficult question to answer because pain is a perception. It is not a rating where I can see and tell. I've seen my patients, some of the patients who don't have, even have pain, they've gone home within second day. I've seen some patients staying up to seven days. So pain is based on the individual. We take all medications, we start medications one week before the surgery to keep the pain at pain. So we prepare them, we give neuromodulators, we do a lot of medications before that, before a week so. So in my case, I see an average pain being about for three to four days, but they usually tend to down. So pain is written on a scale of one to ten. Most of the people in my surgery, they say the pain is about six to seven after surgery. By end of two weeks, they say about three to four. Okay. By end of three months, they say there's no pain. Wow, that, that's absolutely encouraging and it sounds so you know, positive for somebody who's suffering with so much of pain due to arthritis too. Really absolutely. And what kind of mental preparedness should one have to undergo the surgery? Like how, what can one expect during recovery and rehabilitation? You asked one of the most important questions. The most important thing in the outcome of the surgery without any complications or risks is positivity of the patient. If the patient himself or herself is willing for the surgery, the outcome is exceptionally good. Most of the time in Indian scenario, the patients are pushed by their peers, by their husband or the family or my children. By pure peer pressure or the family pressure, they tend to come for the surgery. They are the people who are never happy. So I say my patients, I usually operate only when the patient says, yes, I need the surgery, not by the husband or the family or anybody. So that is one of the most important aspects. As long as patients accept it, that it is a part of the procedure, it is a part of the life, the outcomes are exceptionally good. Okay. And how can a patient prepare one's home for recovery? Do they need some equipment? Do they need to stay at the ground floor or anything? Do they have to do something? To the no, no. Uh, they can walk, as I said, they can climb the stairs within three or four days. But not regularly. Once a day is absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. What we recommend is to do basic things. That is using a frame to walk for six weeks mm -hmm. and using a toilet seat race, depending upon the height of the patient. Okay. Uh, if patients have an Indian come out in India, uh, we recommend them to use a Western come out or the chair to sit down for the toilet for six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the three most important things we advise them. 
Apart from that, I think they should be absolutely fine to go with anything. And a bit of support from the family in the house, somebody to help them out for good. a month or so will be helpful. Okay. And uh, you said there could be minor infections. So when will one know if the incision is infected? Uh, usually, if there is an infection, uh, the wound around the joint replacement area of the scar usually looks angry, uh, the red, mm -hmm. there's a lot of swelling and pain. Mm -hmm. uh, the most important thing is the patient feels unwell. They feel they have a temperature, they have a feverish, they have tiredness. These are the very early signs. But as I said, it depends on where it's off. Certain centers have a very high infection rates and certain centers have a very low infection rate. At Spursh, we have a very low infection rate of less than probably 0.1%, and we haven't seen much down here as well. Okay. And what are some of the tips or some of the things that one should observe after the surgery while sleeping? So how should the knee be? How should the leg be? Do they have to rest on a pillow or anything? No. Else? I would tell them to keep it there in the comfortable position, either bending is comfortable or being straight. But most important thing for them to do in emphasizing the exercise for first two to three weeks is to keep the legs straight. The more the legs straight is, the better the outcome is. Bending will come. Bending will come as time goes by. So there is no hard and fast rule for them to keep the leg, but emphasized on keeping the legs straight is the most important. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Again, note to our audience, if you have any questions, please put it on our comment section and we will get back to you. And uh, yes, doctor, talking about artificial knee, what is the... Uh, what to say? How long does it last? And could there be a recurrence of knee pain or arthritis even after replacement? Uh, there is no recurrence of arthritis. Uh, but yes, the implants, as I said, which we fix to the bone can loosen. The interface between the bone and the implant is the cement, what I said. That can loosen depending upon what sits in there. It could be an infection or it could be either. Um, wear and tear or of the plastic, a lot of factors. Okay. And on average, as of now in the world, which we use the majority of implants, last about 15 years. 90 okay. to 92% of the patients survive 15 to 16 years without any problem. Okay. The same implants we have seen in patients up to 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. okay. There are new implants which are coming into the market for the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. They claim to be more than 25 years of longevity. Okay. Okay. They're slightly a bit more expensive, but we have to wait and see that 25 years, whether the implant which is put five years back will survive that long. So that is the asset test. But as I said, the metallurgy is improving. The research is a lot more higher being put into it. And I believe that the implants do last about 25 years, the new ones. Okay. And uh, can implants fail? as soon as the surgery or are there any um, case studies of implants failing and other complications? What is the course of action after that? Yes, uh, we have seen implants fail if the metallurgy, if the research into the metallurgy is not been put. That is why the implants made within our country or the local people do not last longer. So majority of the implants, what we use, are all with the high international standards. Though manufactured in India, it's been exported throughout Europe and US. Okay? Mm -hmm. Those are the implants what we use in India. These are international standards. So the most important part is the mixture and the manufacturing of the implants. If it is manufactured locally, you do get implants for even 10,000 or 15,000. They fail. They crack and they break. Mm -hmm. So not the implants which we use at the Sparsh uh, hospitals. Okay, okay. And what are the latest advancements in re knee replacement surgery uh, compared to a decade ago? How advanced is it? How better is it today? Uh, it is a lot more because a lot of understanding of the knee replacements have gone in. When the knee replacement came in, a very handful of surgeons used to operate. Mm -hmm. The importance of soft tissue balancing was one of the most key factors which a lot of people did not understand. So knee replacements went through a huge uh, upsy curve for the last 20, 30 years, where mm -hmm. every three patients operated in 10 were unhappy. Though it did not fail, they were not happy. They were not happy with the outcome. So a lot of research went into it to see why these patients are unhappy. A lot of positive things came out. The best outcome was 
how you handle the tissues and how you balance the implants. So a lot of young surgeons who are coming up are doing a lot more soft tissue balancing, uh, a lot more in terms of how to handle these things. And the outcomes of the surgery is also getting better and better. So yes, a lot of research is going into it. A lot of navigated knees are going into it uh, in terms of new developments. But overall, the knee replacement is being going through an up curve in terms of research and uh, new outcomes. Thank you, doctor. And I would like to tell our audience, if you would like to book an appointment with Dr. Sai, please call us on 7026-200-200. In this difficult time, we understand you might be a little hesitant to come out to the clinics. We also offer video consultations, so just call us on this number for any consultation. And talking about knee replacement, doctor, generally it happens in old age is what you said. And is there any limit of age for the surgery to be administered? Uh, not, not necessarily. This, the joint replacements can be done at any age group. Uh, they are like um, car tires. If you have a tire, if you buy a new car today, it is bound to wear off in three to four years down the line. Mm -hmm. The very same way, if you put an implant of a knee replacement, it will wear off in 20 years, depending upon how much you run. The younger the age group you put a knee replacement, quicker it will wear. So if you've done a knee replacement even for 40 years old, where the quality of life is impaired. They're not able to walk, they're not able to go to work, they're not able to sit down, they're not able to sleep. Yes, it depends upon what kind of an arthritis it is and what their quality needs are. So to answer your simple question, no, there is no age group okay. as a bracket. But what we recommend is to delay the process of the knee replacement as long as possible up to 60. Usually today's implants last about 20 years, 20, 25 years. So we tell them one knee replacement lifetime is absolutely fine. Okay. And generally arthritis can happen on both the legs or one leg, depending on genetics and a lot of other factors like you were telling. Uh, can somebody go into both the knee replacements together or would you suggest one after the other? Um, yes, we do recommend uh, both knee replacements sometimes. But I'm a believer of single knee joint replacement. The reason is the patient does not feel it is an operation because they walk within six months. The recovery time is much more faster if you do one knee replacement. Doing two knee replacements, the patient doesn't even get out of the bed for at least two or three days. Even to walk to the toilet, they take about seven to ten days. Okay. So that puts a massive negative impact on the patient. But the positivity, they, they lose that positivity, they lose that the hope that they came for the operation and they get withdrawn into that saying that what am I done? Why have I done this knee replacement? I'm not even able to get up and move in the bed. So those are the things which come into their mind. Yes, we do both knee replacements depending on how bad it is. But I strongly believe in a single knee replacement. Okay. Once you do a one knee, patient doesn't even come back to you for a good few years for the other knee. Okay. The moment they feel the outcome is so good, they themselves walk in for the saying that I need the joint replacement. Okay. For that okay. And are there any other complications that could affect knee replacement surgery, like diabetes, hypertension, anything? Or is that inconsequential? No, it is. Uh, depending upon how bad the diabetes is controlled, how bad other medical comorbidities are controlled, can have a direct outcome of the surgery. Hence, we make sure that these patients are very well managed much before the surgery. The sugar levels are controlled. If they have undergone the heart surgery or bypass surgery, a good cardiac opinion and managing them post-operatively in the ICU to keep them absolutely safe is all taken precautions. So, yes, they do make the huge outcome, but we are prepared in the modern advances in the medical sciences today. Okay. And doctor, lastly, what are some of the tips to maintain a good and healthy knee? It's very important. A lot of doctors in India have a misnomer saying that don't walk. My advice is walk as much as you can. As a fundamental human, uh, as a human being, the most fundamental thing that to keep yourself healthy is walking. The more you walk, the longer your cartilage is going to last. Mm -hmm. So cartilage does not have a blood supply. It gets nourishment from the local fluids within the knee joint by a process called diffusion. So if you don't walk, your cartilage does not get the nutrition. 
when it, there is no nutrition, the cartilage dies faster. Okay. So the more you walk, the healthier your knees are. Okay. Healthier your body is, healthier your joints are. Okay. Thank you so much, doctor, for sparing your time with us and answering all of the questions. And uh, for the audience, yes, at this time, I'm sure all of us would be scared to come out of the home. But don't worry, at Medfin, we have risk-free consultation and we follow a series of protocol to make sure that your experience is risk-free. Fever screening is done before you enter hospitals. History of past illnesses and fever is taken. Smell test, chest x-ray for patient and the attender is done. Travel history is taken into consideration. Location check is done. People from the red zones are not allowed and check on RBA Setu app is done and only one attender per patient is allowed which makes your whole experience and recovery risk-free and faster. Yes, for any appointments, please call us on 7026-200-200 and that brings